Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about phases of compiler. In order to understand it better, please watch our previous three classes that we have discussed in an example and we have given a lot of intuition for understanding this class. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, in our last classes, we discussed about uh, computer architecture basics and how it is going to convert into relocatable code. So you should have that intuition. Okay, phases of compiler. Let's take an example and understand. This is our example. Float A is equal to 2.2, B is equal to 5.5, C is equal to 6. Some A is equal to B plus C into 60. This is the expression given. And if you want to convert this high level language into low level language, means machine level language. So there are, it will go into different phases in our compiler. What's those phases that we, we are going to understand step by step. The first phase is lexical analysis phase. What happens here? When you take this program, we read the program character by character means F L O A T float. It's a keyword. And then A is an identifier. Then equal to is a symbol which we are going to use in expressions. 2.2 is a value, integer uh, floating point value, comma b is equal to b equal to 5.5, comma separate c, c is an identifier, b is an identifier, like that it is going to separate all the, read the character by character and going to separate all the symbols and identifiers, keywords, everything these separations we call them as tokens a is an identifier whenever it is going to separate it is going to maintain a table this table we call it a symbol table a is an identifier it is placed in first line so it is the type of this identifier is f f means floating point we have mentioned the sh uh, shortcut here f means floating point uh, second uh, identifier is b floating point uh, c floating point type uh, and it is going to maintaining so many values regarding that uh, identifiers and uh, uh, remaining values also what's the symbol table what it is going to maintain what factors it is going to consider all these things will be discussed in a separate video later for now remember that it is going to maintain a symbol table for a list of identifiers and their types because it is going to use these uh, types and all those things then only it can compile the program otherwise we cannot compile the program so our first phase is lexical analysis phase okay this is what lexical anal analyzer the name uh, we we can call it a scanning phase for uh, uh, for a complete understanding we are using only single line a is equal to b plus c into 60 multiplied by 60 this line how it is when it is passed to the lexical analyzer phase uh, the output it is going to generate we call them as tokens uh, it has identified an identifier in the symbol table it is given a name one uh, in the first line that's why it is mentioned like this id1 and it has identified a symbol equal to it's a token id2 another token plus next token id3 is the next token multiplication symbol token 60 it's a it's separated it's a it's given a integer value it's a token like that it is going to separate uh, the uh, the complete syntax has been divided into tokens that is what the lexical analysis phase uh, uh, it is going to do that lexical analyzer is going to do so how it is going to do we'll uh, understand in our next classes uh, now coming to this these tokens are given as input to the syntax analysis phase uh, so syntax analysis phase we call it as parsing phase it will take these tokens and it is going to generate a syntax tree or parse tree we already know what syn uh, what this parse tree means uh, in our uh, theory of computation so uh, we used context free grammar when we uh, generated the parse trees that we call it as derivation trees yes this is the basics for the theory of computation is the basics for compiler design uh. So if you don't have any idea about parse trees, derivation trees, please watch the theory of computation and come back here. So syntax analyzer. This syntax analyzer will take these tokens and it is going to generate a 
path stream like this what's the meaning of this uh, see what's the uh, expression a is equal to b plus c into 60 which one has to be done first c multiplied by 60 should be done first why it has to be done because star is having highest precedence then the output which is generated c multiplied by 60 should be added to a then it is going to assign to uh, added to b and it is going to assign to a this is how it has to follow that is identified here see here id1 equal to plus id2 star this is the syntax tree and uh, id3 multiplied by 60 this is what happened first the output which we got here will be added to id2 the output which we got here will be assigned to id1 this is how it is going to generate this syntax tree how it is going to generate this tree will be explained in our next classes now coming to this this syntax tree is given as input to the semantic analyzer semantic analyzer means semantic means meaning of our language has to be checked here meaning of the language means in C, we have so many conditions. What's uh, let me explain you some of the conditions. Uh, if you want to use, if you want to assign a equal to some value, should be assigned to a. If you want to assign that, first a should be declared. Whether it is declared or not, uh, will be checked at semantic analyzer phase. Uh, and we have we are some more concepts also we'll explain here the the input is taken the same syntax tree it is going to generate the same syntax tree it will do some modifications it will go and check the semantic meanings of this syntax tree and if it is if if some modifications needed it will do that those modifications one of the modification is id1 equal to plus id2 star id3 here see id3 is of type float 60 is of type int type conversion automatic type conversion is possible in c language this condition is available in c language means this semantic analyzer is dependent on our program our language conditions these same conditions will not be there for a python language java language for c language it this type conversion has to be done that's why this into to float this is added in semantic analyzer type conversion is going to check here the final semantic after the uh, output uh, which is going to generated uh, by after semantic analyzer this is going as an input to the intermediate code generator see here based on this uh, tree it is going to generate an intermediate code uh, by looking at this intermediate code uh, don't think that this is the final output uh, this sim this looks exactly similar to what we have discussed in our computer architecture our instructions are very much similar to this uh, but it is not a uh, this we call it as three address code there are so many formats for intermediate code generations uh, different uh, people will follow different formats uh, most of them will follow three address code this is what given in our uh, syllabus and in our textbook that's why we are following this three address code uh, what's the meaning into to float 60 is assigned to a variable assume that this is a variable is assigned to t1 uh, then uh, id3 is multiplied by t1 it is placed in t2 id2 and then id2 plus t2 has to be done it is placed in t3 uh, t3 is given to id1 id1 means a this is the intermediate code generator this is not uh, our final machine code so after that this this is machine independent this intermediate code generator is machine independent it does not belong to any machine i will come to you what's machine means in a minute uh, as of now remember that this is machine independent so machine independent code optimizer this code four lines of code intermediate code can be reduced to three lines of intermediate code that is what optimization means this optimization step is is optional no need to place this optimizer otherwise directly this is converted into given to this code generator this is an optional one optimization means uh, make the reduce the code that is what optimization means uh, so this optimized code is given to code generator this code generator phase is responsible of converting into our machine level code this is machine dependent 
so what's machine dependent means here machine means our computer what motherboard we are using what processor we are using what computer architecture we are using x86 architecture they, it is having some uh, instruction set uh, we studied in our computer architecture uh, reduced instruction set complex instruction set uh, according to our machine we have to generate the final output that is what machine dependent code generator will generate a machine dependent means the the final this is the language understood by our machine load f we already discussed this example load f means floating point we are using id3 is placed in register 2 this is the registers that we are using in our system in our architecture register 1 2 register type of architecture will be there so placed in a register 2 multiply float r2 is multiplied by 60.0 means the value present in register 2 is multiplied by 60.0 and placed it in register 2 then we have to do addition load id2 to id2 into register 1 r1 and r2 can be added because it is floating point it is given as a add f and placed in r1 means final result is placed in r1 it is going to store in sorry it is not f s t f store floating point value into id1 register 1 value whatever the value present in register 1 it is to be stored in id1 location this is whatever machine level code we can optimize this machine level code also machine dependent code optimizer this is going to give the final output uh, means it is according to our instruction set we can reduce the code that is what machine dependent code optimization means uh, this machine dependent code optimization will give the final output uh, that is what uh, the, our machine level language is uh, so these optimizers are optional no need to use that uh, every phase every phase is going to use the symbol table it will check the symbol tables and whatever the values it have been saved here it is going to use those symbols and uh, use those uh, values use those values and it is going to generate different uh, syntax trees all these phases are going to use the symbol table so these are the phases of compiler we will go step by step what's this phase how it is going to do what's the second phase how it is going to do everything we'll, we are going to discuss in our coming classes hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you